Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss the unrealistic objections that some stakeholders have to any practical solution to the Northern Ireland Protocol, which Rishi Sunak is going to have to ignore if he wants his deal. There are some in his party that he might be able to barter with. In fact, he's going to have to. But others are just going to have to be bypassed as not being willing to accept any credible resolution. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So the noise is increasing around government regarding talks on the practical implementation of the Northern Ireland Protocol again. You know, various people talking about, you know, this is the window now to go for it. Various stakeholders lobbying for their own interests, of course. In any such situation, some lobbyists will be more successful than others and the political choices will be made according to what works out best for the majority or at least the majority of people and groups that the government care about. But if Sunak wants his deal, he is going to have to distinguish between those who will accept something credible and those who will not. If they won't, you know, he must either ignore them or he'll have to do without his deal and wait for Labour to sort it out after the election. In fact, this is what should be focusing the minds of Tory MPs in general. They are likely to lose the next election. When Labour form a government, if Sunak has agreed a final settlement with the EU, Starmer will honour it. So if the Tories want a settlement that they have worked on, they'd better finalise it before the election. Otherwise, Labour aren't going to mess about. They will conclude the years of messing about with a practical solution and the Tories will have no import, just as Labour are getting no import now. And they'll not be able to complain. A party that did not include others in the process of massive constitutional change in government will have no cause to complain if they are frozen out in opposition. They will complain, <laughs> but they'll have no right to. So they need to ask themselves, do they want to be seen... As, as implementing their own policy or do they want to, Labour to be seen as clearing up their mess? Then there are the pro-Brexit unionists in Northern Ireland. I won't spend too long here because we've been over the issues enough times. But when you break it all down, it's really this simple. At some point, there's going to be a settled arrangement with the protocol. The protocol is not going to be removed, as some unionists want. It forms a major part of an international treaty which the current government negotiated, signed and won their large majority on the back of. And whatever the detail of that final solution, it will reflect the... Oh God, that was an awful statement. Whatever the detail of that final arrangement, it will reflect the wording of that treatment which was signed into law three years ago. Not one word of it will be changed. This means that there will be no checks between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland there will be some checks between Britain and Northern Ireland. At the moment, the discussions are just about reducing the number of necessary checks. You know, you can ease them with measures intended to protect the single market from smuggling, intentional or otherwise, but there will have to be some. You know, there are people for whom this is unacceptable. They will have to be ignored. They don't like the protocol. I don't like Brexit. But it is a fact of life. We must all live with the consequences of politicians' actions, whether we approve them of them or not. If you can find a practical way to get what you want, politically, fine. But Sunak needs to understand that there are some people who will only accept a solution that is made of 100% fantasy. You either ignore them and faff about for another year or, or, or you faff about for another year or two before watching Labour sort it all out. That's it you know, bypass them or not. Like the boss of Marks and Spencer's, another one, Archie Norman. He's kicking up a fuss again. This is the guy who runs a huge retail company and didn't actually understand the implication of Brexit for his business until it actually started happening. He's been proudly displaying his ignorance about how trade works for a few years now, and yet he still gets to keep his job. On this occasion, he's complaining about the prospect of needing different labelling for goods sold in Britain as compared to Northern Ireland. Mate, they're two different markets. Of course you're going to end up with different labelling. And politically, this is going to be an essential part of the process. If you want to reduce checks, you're going to need that different labelling. From the point of view of politicians, the physical checks are what are problematic. They want to reduce them as much as possible. But the reason for the checks is to reduce the risk of people exporting from Britain 
to the EU without going through the usual trade barriers by sending it via Northern Ireland. So you need measures to prevent this or at least massively reduce the risk. You know, to get close to a guarantee that goods passing into Northern Ireland will not be sold in the Republic of Ireland, that is going to mean live tracking of the movement of those goods. It's going to mean labelling, which makes it clear these goods are for sale in Northern Ireland only. Can't be the same labelling as goods for sale in Britain because two different markets with two different sets of standards now. And people cannot, you know, they, they can't bang on about, oh, the standards are basically the same. So it's like, Largely, it may be true now, but Brexiteers keep also telling us that the whole point of leaving the EU was to follow their own rules. Oh, our standards are basically the same. Oh, but we want our standards to be completely different. So that means that there is at least the chance, if not the probability, that standards will diverge. In point of fact, they already have. But there is no limit to the level of divergence in the future. And we can't keep renegotiation, renegotiating the implementation of the protocol, you know, every day. Can you imagine? There's no point in coming up with a, a settlement that takes account of the regulatory framework in Britain and the EU right now, because it's going to keep changing. You know, and it's... it's. But Mr Norman's complaining that it will be hugely expensive to have this extra labelling. Yes, yes, it will. I was talking about that years ago. How come he's only just catching on now? It means an extra production line for part of your process, which could prove prohibitively expensive for some businesses who will just have to stop exporting to Northern Ireland altogether because it's not worth it. I talked about this years ago, before we left the EU. But this will not be an issue for people and businesses in Northern Ireland because the protocol allows them to turn to the massive continental-wide single market for alternative suppliers, which we have inexplicably chosen to leave. So it's a cost to British businesses, a drop in GDP, a drop in tax revenues, meaning the government would have to raise the overall rate of tax in order to pay for a skeleton system of barely functioning public services. But it is what the government signed up to. They chose it. They don't get to complain about it now. And the CEO of a retail giant should have known how a government policy that was in the works for years before it took place was going to affect their business. After all, if the CEO of a retail giant wasn't able to find out, how are we to expect millions of small businesses to do so? But of course, Sunak doesn't have to pay attention to retailers either. In fact, the government have been ignoring the advice of much better informed business leaders for years now. So you can't imagine there'd be a change of policy now. But it just highlights the pull on the government from different directions, none of which pull in the direction of a realistic settlement. In order to get agreement, Sunak needs to ignore the anti-protocol unionists, although there is reason to include more reasonable ones who just have a few specific concerns. He'll have to, you know, the, the business concerns about the extra cost of Brexit. The government committed to ignoring those when we left the EU under their hard, extreme Tory Brexit. You know, the concerns are valid from businesses. They're absolutely valid. But the time to complain about that ran out in 2019. The, the window for complaining about that was from 2016, maybe 2015, but certainly 2016, right up until 2019. We're long past, point the, uh, past the point now. You know, complain to your customers, by all means, put signs up saying, this is because of Brexit. You know, we're now going to put our prices up because of Brexit. Our profits are lower because of Brexit. Do that, fine. Urge your customers to, to harangue politicians to, to reverse it all. There's no point in complaining to the politicians who are now trapped in the web of their own creation. But what Sunak can't ignore is the concern of his own MPs, because he needs them to not only approve of any final settlement, he actually doesn't need them to approve the settlement. Keir Starmer has already said, you come up with a settlement that's in the national interest and we will back it. You know, you don't need all of your MPs to vote for it. Labour will vote for it if it's in the national interest. But realistically, politically, he cannot, he cannot win something like this, a big change like this, with Labour votes, because his own party will tear him to pieces. But, you know, he, he needs, so he sort of needs their approval, but he also needs to agree not to derail the rest of his essential legislative programme out of spy. That means he has to have a deal with the ERG of some kind. What worries me is that he gets them to, in some sort of bartering process, agree a protocol deal, which I'm not sure they're all that bothered about, in return for their bonfire of regulations via the retained EU law bill, which they're very bothered about. 
I will just add for a final point, however, there is actually a way to make sure everyone gets what they want. Unionists of all varieties, retailers, Brussels, Westminster, everyone. Actually, maybe not the ERG. Actually, maybe some unionists won't be happy either. But they will still prefer it to the here and now. The protocol did not cause any of these problems at all when it was signed into law. Not, not a single issue was caused for anyone for a full 11th month, 11 months. Not one issue was raised. Because it's not the protocol that has caused trade frictions between Britain and Northern Ireland, as the media and politicians allude to. It was leaving the single market and the customs union. More especially the single market in this case. The way to completely remove the trade friction without compromising the integrity of the EU single market is to be part of the same market again. The protocol would still be in place, it would still be there, but it would be causing zero problems, just as it caused zero problems for the first 11 months that it was implemented. You know, it would go back to being of no real consequence to anyone again, just as it was of no consequence when it was first written into law. It would be like introducing a law that says you may not leave your house of a Wednesday morning with a Black Forest Gatto strapped to your head. Now, there may be people who would object very strongly to such a law, a needless imposition for which we recognise no benefits to society, you know, much as some regard the protocol. But they could take the pragmatic view that, well, as nobody has ever been reported to have wandered out of their house of a Wednesday morning with a Black Forest Gatto on their head anyway that there won't be any impositions at all in a practical sense, so we can just forget the law exists. But for Sunak and his Tory MPs, he has three choices, and it always comes down to these three choices. The first, mess about trying to find the point of the Venn diagram where all the circles overlap. There is no such point. And then let Labour give themselves an easy win by fixing something that the Tories couldn't manage to sort out in five years. The second is to ignore those who will simply not accept anything that sticks to the terms of the treaty, which is not itself being renegotiated because that has been done. The third is to commit to rejoining the single market. It's really one of those, Prime Minister, take your pick. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.